in this episode of Mind Pump. So we start out the episode by talking about our lives, current events, studies on fitness and health. And shenanigans. And then after that 32-minute intro, we get into the fitness portion where we answer fan questions on everything from training to nutrition to lifestyle. So here's how the episode went. We start out by talking about Adam's restless night. Mm. Uh, everybody's wondering why Adam's irritable again. I wonder. He's not getting good sleep. Then I talked about uh, the movie Joker. I watched that last night, and it uh, it seriously messed with me a little bit. Uh, creeped me out, man. Phenomenal movie. Really good, though. Joaquin Phoenix, the best Joker of all time. Uh, I'm going to say that right now. Uh, I talked about a company, uh, speaking of clowns, that you can have donuts delivered to your friends by a terrifying clown. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, of, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Uh, I talked about seasonal testosterone variation. This is kind of interesting. Talked about some studies that showed that that men's testosterone levels pretty consistently will vary depending on the season, um, which is kind of cool. Um, and then I talked about the testosterone guide that I wrote. This is a guide that talks about how to naturally raise your testosterone, the best ways to naturally raise your testosterone. And then we talked about the Everly Well at Home Hormone Test. So these are tests that you can buy online. A testosterone test is $49, but there's many more. There's men's tests, women's tests, and more. You order these online. They come to your door. No doctor's prescription required. Take the test, mail it in, get your results online. Um, it takes all the middlemen out. Super easy. Phenomenal company. We are partnered with them, and we have a discount for you if you want to use them. If you go to everlywell.com, uh, use the code MINDPUMP and you'll get 15% off any test. Uh, oh, and by the way, our podcasts are all on YouTube. Make sure you go check them out on our YouTube Mind Pump all channel. pretty little faces. That's right. Then I talked about heavy metal, not the music, yeah, but rather what they're finding in a lot of plant proteins. One study showed that 75% of the samples that they took had too many heavy metals in them. Some of them contained lead. Bogus. Now, one company that produces organic plant protein that is free of heavy metals is Organifi. Now, Organifi is a company that makes all organic plant-based supplements. We love them. They are one of our sponsors, and we have a discount for you. If you go to Organifi.com, that's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash mind pump, and use the code mind pump, you'll get a full 20% off everything uh, that you buy. Um, then Justin talked about his new flag football coaching strategy, utilizing his dog. Yeah. Uh, pretty cool. It's brilliant. That's right. Um, and then we get into the fitness portion of this episode. So the first question, this person is saying that, you know, a lot of women say that they're quad dominant. In other words, their quadricep muscles are doing most of the work when they're doing exercises like squats. Is this a real thing? And if it is a real thing, what can you do about it? The next question this person says, uh, you know, carbs aren't essential, but where should we use them? Where are they helpful? So we talk all about carbohydrates in that part of this episode. Next question. Uh, this person wants to know what our favorite live event has been so far. So last year we did about seven live events. This is where we went to different cities in the U.S., answered live questions from our fans, met people. So we talk about our favorite ones, and then we talk about what they're going to look like this coming year. And the final question this is for personal trainers. We talk about the line between trainers and clients. Where do you draw that line? Blurred lines. Even though you might get close with them because, you know, of course, you're training them for years and years and years. Also, this month, MAPS Anabolic. Now, MAPS Anabolic is a phenomenal program. This program was designed to maximize strength, muscle building, metabolism boosting, and body sculpting. It's our most popular workout program. It comes with workout videos, blueprints. There's three phases, four if you count pre-phase. So you could do this program from beginning to end. Uh, it could take you three to four months. So it's all mapped out and programmed out for you by us, uh, expert personal trainers. This program is 50% off. This is the only time of the year that we run this promotion. So do it now or you'll lose it. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapsred.com. That's M-A-P-S-R-E-D.com. And use the code RED50, R-E-D-5-0, no space for the discount.
Lack of sleep and food are like, man, for me, those two things are a motherfucker. Just make you yeah. just pissy. Yeah. I get yeah. I just have them so short when the, when uh I have a night that I don't get good rest and then if I also don't get a chance to eat. Yeah. You didn't get good sleep again last night? Yeah, two nights in a row. Oh, why? Ah, bro, the you know, all, all good things. I mean, what's happening right now is uh you know, Max has got his routine now, which is awesome. We, you know, we we bathe him at about seven thirty. She feeds him his last time at eight eight fifteen. He's down in bed between eight thirty and nine, and he's down for the for the night, which is now opening up nine to midnight. You know, like for Katrina and I to be able to talk with each other, and so one of the things that we have been talking about a lot lately is just a lot of things going on with the business, which excites me. It's you know, I love. Oh, then you can't sleep. Yeah. Right, so. Mm. So here's the that's the drawback. So we've got this newfound time, nine to midnight, that we we haven't had before, and we're spinning it together. And you know what I what I love about Katrina, uh, she allows this or she enjoys this conversation with me as much as I do. She's a serial entrepreneur at heart, and uh, she she loves uh, watching and being a part of the pis- the business building, and I love that too. And so, you know, sometimes that becomes the dialogue at. 10, 11 o'clock at night, and it's like just what we need to do and what's going well, what we need to work on, and just and what that does is, and then I'm pretty good. Like last night, I, I walked away because like the night before, I didn't get good sleep, and so I looked at her. I'm like, it's 11 right now. I got to go to bed, you know. And she's like, all right. So I kiss her good night, and she stays up and finishing up work stuff, and then I go upstairs, but then I lay in bed. And then the, the fucking ideas are like flowing through the head, and I'm just, and then I have this, I, I get in this area where I'm like. Should I get up and just start taking notes in my iPhone right now, or should I just try and like meditate and get it, get my idea? And like, I I struggle with this because some of my best ideas or some of the best things that come out for me at these weird times. And I'll be laying there in bed, and I'll be like, I got my and I've I've got my blue blockers up there, I've got my phone up there, and I'm going like, so I could put them on real quick and I can take some notes, get this all out of my head. Or I can try and just say forget about it, and I'll you know wait till morning. Now, does it help if you were to to do that and write it down? Does it help you go to sleep? So that's what I'm struggling with. I don't know the answer to mm. that. I really don't because mm. what happens if I don't? I lay in bed, and as much as I try and become present and count sheep, or you know, or box breathe and do all these things, to it's really tough for me to not get rid of that idea or that thought that I have. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then I, I typically will give in and I'll give up and I'll and I'll get it out on paper. Otherwise, I'll lay in bed and go like, what if I forget this? Mm-hmm. You know, what if I wake up tomorrow? It happens to me all the time. And I forget it. And then I'm mad at I, myself. I get up and I'll write it in the notes and uh, right. it interrupts everything. So I, I'm like, I got to get this on, on paper. Otherwise, I'm not, or notes, whatever, right? Uh, uh, or else I'm going to potentially forget it. And so then I get up and I write down. I do, I, I think that's the answer because- if I don't, I'll drive myself crazy all night thinking about it, and, and maybe wonder. because you'll think mm-hmm. to yourself, "That's that, this may actually it may actually help because you might be afraid of forgetting it. Mm-hmm. There may be a, a part of you that's like, keep remembering, keep remembering, keep yeah. right. remembering. That's what I'm doing. So you may be better off writing it down. So, okay, now and then I can, go. To, yeah, now I can forget. So that's it. what I do. And that's so you what don't I really do. have any other strategy, huh? Nothing that you found that helps you when you're like that. Have you tried jerking off? <laughs> no. <laughs> What, it what really helps me? Yeah. What, what works best for me? Justin said that is last time. is yeah. to to block my day. Wisdom. Uh, I've learned to do this, and uh, and I'm really good at it when I'm on my schedule. Now, and this is what I think I talked to you guys the other day. This whole fatherhood thing. You know, the, the biggest challenge that I've had about fatherhood right now is it's taken me many years to get to a place where I kind of know like, okay, how I need to get ready for bed, what time I need to train, what time I need to eat. It's all, all what, upended. It, rituals. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. Like, you know, but I've, I've figured this out. I mean, there's a lot, like, especially when you're building to something of the scale that we, what we've done over here and, and it's, and it just continues to compile. I've had to um, learn to schedule my day where it's like, okay, this block of time, this is where I do all my creative thinking. And yeah. this is what I do to promote that. This block of time, this is when I get all my like shitty work, like email, respond, that crap mm-hmm. out. This is where I get calls out. This is where I work on social. This is where, you know, and I have this, and this is where I get my time for myself, where I read or I prepare or I come with content for the podcast. And I had that and I had a nice little rhythm going at what that looks like. And since Max, 
it's just all fucking been upended completely. And so right now I'm kind of like scrambling and trying to reorganize and prioritize. Well, what can I allow to get fucked and what can I not allow to get fucked? And so that's been the greatest challenge for me right now is like, okay, something has got to give. It's inevitable because that, that same time that I had six months ago doesn't no longer exist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, and and obviously my son is extremely important to me and being a good father and present and, and also re- and a good partner and relieving Katrina. These are all very, very important to me. So where do I carve time and where, to, where and so I'm trying to figure all that yeah, out. Right. And what happens sometimes when I carve away from my the shoe shopping, maybe? <laughs> no, that's gone, dude. <laughs> that's already gone. <laughs> gone. You don't even look yeah, at shit. That, exactly. Off. I get people that DM me now all the time, like, "Hey, what's up, Delish? Oh, do you see this?" I'm like, "Bro, I'm going to start, oh. start dressing like me." Soon. <laughs> yeah. I throw another kid on there. Bro, put me, <laughs> hey, put me out to the pasture if that's <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> fucking. Yes, I remember man. not seeing uh, any movies. You uh, know, like you just don't do like the stuff you're doing for a while. Like you, you wouldn't finally saw the Joker. <laughs> Right, Joker was. Oh, we I saw it over the weekend. To your point, that my buddies and I were texting about yeah. Joker. I sent a message to my buddies, like, You're "Oh, like, I'm hearing all these great <laughs> things about Joker." So my two buddies that are have kids, right? And I send over to them, um, man, I really want to see that. I heard all this great stuff, and then the other guy sends back to me, and we all have. So we have a one has a one and a half year old, one has a one year old, and then I have a three month old, and so and we're all in a group thread. And I send over like, "Oh man, I I really want to see it. I heard it's amazing, this and that." And then Jared sends back to me, he's like. Uh, He's like, well, keep me posted. Let me know if you go see it because I want to know if it, if it's good. And I put, laugh out loud, uh, still haven't figured out uh, where you get to do things like this anymore. <laughs> you don't. You go Netflix. Right. right. It's you so, wait until it gets on, you know, on the sends, channel. He sends back to me and so does the other guy, LLL, capital letters, and they're just like, I've been in the movies one time since we've had my, my son. He's yeah, like, dude. I almost went twice by myself, but I haven't been able it's, to go. It's funny because, you, uh, yep. you know, what the audience doesn't know is the other day you brought it up. You're like, oh, let's all, because yeah. you're like, I know when I can watch Joker during work hours. I'll convince, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll convince Adam. Like, oh, man, yeah, that is kind of a good I'll idea. convince Justin Sal and Doug yeah. to go watch it. And Justin's yeah. like, I already watched it. I'm like, I got tickets for tomorrow. I'm like, Fuck. I was so yeah. mad at you. Yeah, <laughs> you think you asshole. Because that was my solution. Because yeah. I'm thinking to myself, there's no fucking way I'm going to be able to get me and Katrina and go and watch this movie. I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? Dude, Convince the guys. It was so good, dude. It yeah. was so... It, it was, was really well done. It was so good. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix did such a good job of portraying a mentally yeah. unstable person. It was that you, frighteningly, you know, like accurate and, and realistic. I that, think that's what was so disturbing. You about felt, it. you feel weird when you're done. Like the movie's over and I feel like I question my own sanity a little bit. Like, oh, am I crazy? Yeah. Is other <laughs> people crazy? Yeah. What's going on? Jessica was, she was uh, visibly shook. Like she, yeah. she, she started talking about like, People she's worked with and clients and people that she knows and she's like, do you think that maybe they're? I'm like, I think you're just a little. You know, yeah, yeah, now we're looking freaking for out it. from. Damn, the, it was that good. Well, huh? it's like, too, bro, he did a good job. Have you ever seen like somebody really? really I haven't been to an open mic or anything like a, a you know at a comedy mm-hmm. a place where somebody was like totally bombing. Like, like they're just not doing well yeah, at all. Yeah. Like, so there was, there was that element. You in feel it. uncomfortable yeah. yourself. So like that, that was the, the feeling for the whole movie. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, uh, but it's, it's not like, so, you know, sometimes you watch movies and they'll show a crazy person and they're like, you know, crazy killer or, you know, oh my God, he's demented and twisted. No, no, no. He was like what you would think an actual crazy person now, do they, would be like. Do they, go, do, do they do a good job of like building his character to where you almost feel compassion for him? 100%. Yeah. Oh, okay. 100%. Yeah, no, that's what I liked about it. It was like you, you really bought into the fact that he was damaged in, in that like no, he was reaching out for help and he was mm-hmm. trying to do the right thing by getting medication yep. and he's like trying now, to make all these steps. But Now, here's a question. Um, Joaquin Phoenix, there's a lot of scenes where he's with his shirt off or in his apartment in his underwear and he's got a very strange posture. And in fact, his left shoulder, he's yeah. got really bad we, scapular winging. Yeah, I think he's always had like a little bit of that. I was going like, to say, yeah, was he doing it on purpose? Movies. Because it looked eerie. And I'm wondering if he did it on purpose to look like I think he was he the Joker. I think he exaggerated it. You think so? Yeah, I think I, I'd have to read up on it. I wonder about that. Because it was like, that was the other part. Like his body portrayed somebody that you're like, ooh, something's off. You yes. Know, it's all asymmetrical. They made him weird. lose weight. So he lost a ton of weight. So he's just kind of, he's really, really skinny in it. Um, he just, the whole thing looks uncomfortable. He just yeah. makes you feel weird in your own skin, but you also kind of feel bad for him. Um, but you're also terrified of him. He did a fucking, it, fun- it was all those things. I, yeah. I think he, I think he 
crushed uh, what's his name's Joker Heath, Heath Ledger. Ledger. Yeah, Heath Ledger did a phenomenal job. Don't get me wrong, um, but uh, I think Joaquin oh, Phoenix did yeah, it way better. It's not even close. Yeah, yeah. that's what I've way heard. more believable. Which is blows my mind because Dark Knight by itself is amazing because yeah. of Heath Ledger. I yes. mean, that movie was made because of how much he crushed. Joker. Well, Joker is just it was a it was the low budget film. It's not an expensive film. It's not tons of special effects and craziness or whatever. Yeah, and it's, it's a slow, very there's slow parts to it too. It's not like like full action. Or anything. It's yeah, and there's, like and there's a couple parts where you're questioning the reality, like what's going on? Is this real or is this in his mind? Like they did a really good job with that. Film. I heard and the he only really pe- the job. only people that were upset with it are the the hardcore comic people that wanted to see more of the action and the more comic side of it, which this was more character building and storytelling. Um, yeah, the nerds will always be upset, <laughs> right? You know what I mean, like you can't ever do it right if it's like, oh, yeah. I read this and like you know, like whatever comic it was. Like they did a fantastic job and they created like a, an origin story for him that was like really believable. Yeah, no, you it, literally you'll leave feeling a little uneasy because of. His depiction of uh, of mental illness it was so it was so crazy it was so scary it was really good really good yeah. speaking of scary clowns <laughs> oh, all right there's this company called I think it's called Hurt Donuts if I'm not mistaken you guys <laughs> Hurt, will love it like H U R T I I think so I'm gonna find it right now because mm. it's uh it's pretty funny so this is a a donut delivery service that will have a scary as fuck looking clown <laughs> show up to your friends it's called Hertz Donuts oh my god. They'll they'll send a scary clown to deliver donuts to whoever you want. Like look at the, look at this guy. Look at the picture of this guy. Is it like really scary? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like Ugh. like like scary, scary. Like yeah. it, like uh, Stephen Screaming. So he'll show up to your friends and deliver donuts. Like you know. <laughs> 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 what a random business! Tell me all. Uh, no, what do you mean? It's so awesome! I know. I would sit the shit shit. out of your friends. Have Dude. you ever seen the? Have you ever seen the the fuck you flowers or whatever? No. Oh my god, Doug, look these up. Look up. Uh, and it's they're called something else. Uh, but look up fuck what you. Do they flowers. smell like ass. No, it's a what? dead rose. You said somebody a uh, dead rose, and it's like a fuck you. Like I've, you've never seen those before. No. Oh yeah, that's a smart. I think it's. I thought you, it was a clever. You can also business. send people a bag of yeah. dicks. You guys know that, right? Oh yeah. That's you can send a bag of dicks. A bag of dicks. Here's a bag of dicks. Like a whole bag of just rubber dicks. Yeah. <laughs> Do whatever you want. <laughs> really? Yes. What company does uh, that? I don't remember. How fun. Yeah. And then there was a company that um, I think you can send animal poop to somebody because I think there's laws against human poop. So, wow. the, But you can send like horse shit yeah. to someone. You know? Well, you've talked about your, your stripper story already, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My buddy yeah. got me hard on that one. That was amazing. Wait, the, wait hold the, on. He did what? The funny... <laughs> I just, he cut you hard on that. Yes, yeah. dude. Yeah. He. Uh, She's like eighty-five. Well, I, the, and the funniest part about that story is, I don't think that he intended it for that. I he think thought he, it was gonna be a real good. Yeah, it just ended up being that way. So he was like, "No, that's not it, Doug. It's something like that, though." It, did you look up "fu flowers"? I think it's something like that. Yeah, I didn't see anything, but I'll just keep Dude, looking. Doug, your Google game's been off oh, lately, man. Sorry. <laughs> Google game. Hey, hey, everything you say is so obscure. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's what it is. Doug, Doug, Google, Google bag of dicks. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Don't ruin your, yeah, don't ruin your search history. Anyway, speaking of dicks, I don't know what reminded me of this, but uh, did you guys know that um, testosterone levels are seasonal? Hmm. Did you know that? Testosterone levels are seasonal? Yes. So it it increases like more towards the warmer seasons? Okay. Well, okay. So So, this is is interesting because- So let's talk. I want to hear what your theories are. So theories, my theory would would be that it would make sense that the the benefits that you get from the sun and vitamin D and everything is so summertime would typically spike it, but it makes more evolutionary sense that when we're- Raise it internally. Well, when we're all cuddled up together in the wintertime, that that's when we were probably procreating. Or when we need it more to go hunt, like when it's cold, I would feel like we'd need a raise in testosterone. So it actually does peak around early winter- but here's the theory behind that. If you get a if you get a woman pregnant around early winter, when is she going to have the baby? Summer next year. During the time when the baby's most likely to survive. Yeah. So it's like we evolved to want to have sex during or have higher testosterone during times when getting pregnant would make sense because then the woman would have the baby. So that's what I thought. I yeah. Which is which is interesting in counter because you would think that the benefits from the sun yeah. that you would get from being out during the summertime mm-hmm. Would be what actually helped kick up or produce more yeah. testosterone. Now, now don't get That's me wrong. Yeah, now don't get me wrong. Uh, adequate vitamin D levels and sunlight. I wrote about this in the in the free testosterone guide that we we actually have now available. It's now available at mind nice. pump, mindpumpfree.com. Um, I wrote about this in there how sunlight and vitamin D 
in men in test low with low testosterone, how sunlight and vitamin D supplementation raises testosterone uh, pretty consistently. Of course, lifting heavy weights, that's the other one. We've talked about that. That's, a, that's probably the most consistent way of raising testosterone. And then here's another one. Um, you don't want to eat too little of anything. Right. Uh, low, uh, too low of carbs, too, too low, low of carb, fat. Yeah. Too low of fat, too, too low, low of protein. Yeah. All three of those, if they're too low, uh, will bring uh, testosterone down. And because a man's testosterone levels are so reactionary, like so many things can, your testosterone fluct levels fluctuate throughout the day. Your attitude can change uh, fluctuations. Sleep can change fluctuations. Your diet can change fluctuations. Your workout can change fluctuations. This is why I think it's so important that if you're like, if you want to really stay up and up with your health, that you test your your hormone levels. I suggest every quarter, so every few months, mm -hmm. see where you're at and track track what you're doing. You know, like okay, you know, I'm doing low reps and heavier weight this time. My my diet is higher in fat, a little bit lower in, in carbs. Right. Uh, sleep is good. Let's see what my testosterone levels are you know, this quarter and then, oh, next quarter I'm trying a couple vegan days or I'm doing a little bit intermittent fasting. You know, let's see where my testosterone levels are there and just kind of see what works because for a man, testosterone levels tend to be a pretty good gauge of overall um, health. You mm -hmm. know now, I mean? in the guide, do you actually recommend like people test with Everly Well or is that something that you don't even recommend? I wrote, I, I wrote in there that uh, Everly Well is, a, is a, uh, an option because you can get, I mean, the gold standard, go to your doctor, get a blood test. The problem is there's a, there's, you know, barriers, right? You got to get the, the doctor has to uh, write up that you can go get a blood test you gotta at the, the lab. You got to get the appointment first. And, and get the appointment. Then the doctor has to, you know, and if you go to your doctor and you're like, hey, I want to test my testosterone, he'll say, he or she will say, well, why? And you say, well, I just want to test it every quarter. I'm like, no, we're, you know, we're not going to do that because your insurance will cover it. You have to pay out of pocket if you want to do all that, whatever. They're not going to do that for you. So the at-home test is the best option because they're inexpensive. You mail it to your house. What's the testosterone test? It's like under 100 bucks, right? Yeah, well, the, you mm -hmm. can do the pure testosterone one, which is only 49 bucks. That's it. Or, like, yeah, less or than you can do the men's health test, which kind of does, I think, three or four was four things that mm -hmm. are on there. Mm -hmm. We talked about it on my last one. That one's 99. Now, the women's test is more complicated because with the women's test, yeah, they, period. Yeah, they have them test themselves through different periods of their cycle to see – where, because, because, you know, women's hormones fluctuate, uh, pretty, very consistently around 30, you know, 28 days, I think it is, or whatever. So their test is a little more complicated. Whereas the man's, we just do one saliva vial or whatever for the, for, or two or three, I think, for women, they test it, you know, several times during their cycle to see where they're at. But, but yeah, that's, uh, I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that there were pretty consistent seasonal variations in testosterone among men. Kind of crazy, huh? Well, yeah, it's it what's fascinating is that it's different than what you would think, like I said, because mm -hmm. of the sun. The sun, you would think, had played a role in that, but then, like I said, for evolutionary reasons, it would make sense yes. that when we would want to procreate in the wintertime for the mm -hmm. baby's survival, and then also, too, that we were probably cuddled together, laying in bed all the time. You know what I'm saying? Summer, we're probably out and active and hunting and exploring and traveling and moving. <sighs> Where wintertime you're probably hibernating more, and I would think that, that would also. Yeah, cause I don't know. More it's sex. interesting, a lot more right? Friction. Yeah, because right. I don't know about you guys, but you guys remember this, and maybe it's different because. Uh, Did you see Rachel's post? Uh, which one? It's cuffing season. That's what that means. What? <laughs> you didn't see the the MB cuffing? Yeah. What is so, that? So like handcuffing. Why? Because this is where you lock somebody up, like as far in a relationship. Oh. That's what that post is so funny. I got dirty. Yeah, Rachel, I don't know. my mind went. <laughs> Ra Rachel just totally. I, I had a feeling she did that to you guys. I was like, you know what? She, I bet you the boys don't even fucking know uh, what the hell right she over my head. Yeah, it did go over your guys' head. So what does that mean? So that's a, the, people call this cuffing season right now because of the, the time of year where people lock lock up relationships because they want someone for holidays. Yes. Oh. Yes. I see. Right. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, I, don't, I feel like <laughs> I don't get it. I feel like you'd want to save money. Yeah, you know? like, yeah, hey, right? yeah. I've been thinking about breaking up. Uh, Maybe it's, that, yeah, it's usually when you ditch them. Yeah, 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 yeah I don't want to pay for all this. Well, that's like, a, that's gifts coming. How up. a bunch of dudes yeah. probably think that's about how it. we think. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think that's a bunch of girls think about uh, it. Uh, that's hilarious. Uh, no, I didn't. You said cuffing. I had a, I had some like BDSM yeah. stuff in my yeah, mind. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Yeah. Those little finger cuffs. I sent a quick text yeah. there real quick. Hey, no, did you know? I thought that was a, a really clever post of hers. And I, uh, as I'm reading it, I'm it going like. It was so clever. It just went over. <laughs> over all the, all the bosses. I've done heads. a bunch of those. <laughs> That's so interesting. <laughs> cool. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, you did one the other day, your post on Instagram. What did you just do? You just did oh, I don't know. I do stuff that goes over everybody's head. I, That's just I, my, my, I, my jam. I always laugh when you do posts like that. Yeah, because you know. 
yes. you're gonna get like two people that are like yeah I get everybody it. else is like what the uh, what is this uh, i do i do it every once in a while yeah. too yeah. our, our humor is different uh, yeah i kind of just like to yeah mess with people that's kind of my my humor well, well my because i do memes so often now in my story and people are now they, they i literally have people that follow me specifically because they like the memes so yesterday i did a q a where i answered people's questions I had like four DMs from people who were like, can you please put the bees back up? I don't care about the questions and answers. Damn. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like they're mad. That is interesting. Yeah, though. dude. Because I'm the op mine's the opposite. People like that's what they wish I did more the 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 Q and A stuff uh, yeah. when I interact. Yeah. But I'm not a big I still get a lot of views and all, so it doesn't drop off, but it's right. funny that I'll get people who are actually like, fuck man, my daily my daily memes, they're not up. You know? <laughs> I gotta listen to this guy answer yeah. questions. But it, but the other the, here's the good thing: people send them That's to me like funny. crazy now. If I, I literally don't have to search for memes anymore, people send. Now I will say this: about half the memes I get, I will never share because they're way too dark for Instagram. <laughs> yeah. People, they know now. You know yeah. what I mean? They send me the terrible ones. I can't share that, dude. That's <laughs> yeah. terrible. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys getting any any comments uh, from people uh, about the YouTube, um, the podcast? Now that's on YouTube. Have you had anybody message? Well, you? apparently, like one guy thought, like was really like, like I don't know if he he was just like like confused because he, he thought for sure I was an African American. What? <laughs> he thought you were black? Yeah, and I was like, oh, wow, cool. <laughs> no, I had, yeah, I just thought that was interesting. You, like, like, you sound like a typical white stoner Yeah, I sound like a surfer. stoner surfer guy. I was really? like, where, where are you getting that? But I just I find it like amazing like what, what people's perception is. And then now they see us in person on, on you know YouTube. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what else we get. You're getting a, well, you're getting a lot more handsome comments. That's what I see. Yeah. yeah is that what's happening? Yeah, yeah, no, he yeah. gets a lot. I see that. He's getting a lot of love over we there. We don't call him the Brad Pitt of yeah, well, podcasting for you guys have been reason. shitting on me for three years so you know it's like, it's like, <laughs> like, like yeah. people actually hey, see what hey you're welcome right yeah, all that yeah, shit yeah. everyone's like God, downplaying I the hell out of yeah, me yeah i thought know justin I mean? was like this ugly slob he's handsome as fuck dude <laughs> yeah right oh, yeah, everybody, like, yeah, Bro, we, Adam's hey, we, all up on this pedestal. I know yeah. they're like, oh, he's we oversold that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah we did. <laughs> Everyone's like, you, he, he just all right. <laughs> <laughs> he's just all right. But That's Justin, a, yeah. we underpromised and you overdelivered, son. Well, no, one thing mm. that that um, I th uh, Andrew's been doing that I really like is he'll take the because you know how we do our, our Q and A episodes and we answer questions at the back half of the episode. He'll take and just and put clips of just the question and answer so so you can go on there right what you don't have to watch the whole podcast you can literally just watch that one question and how we answer it did rachel and andrew talk to you what i talked to her this morning. okay awesome so i was just talking before we came in here uh you'll actually he's gonna start shipping those to you guys all like if it's your clip he'll send it to justin if it's your clip he'll send it to you mm -hmm. and then you guys can use that to share in your story and then drive up to the, the youtube so oh very cool yeah yeah so no, we'll start no. we'll get it out to the, the audience that's already on no, Instagram. people need to check out yeah that uh, mm. that youtube channel very now. cool hey do you guys remember a while ago when that big study came out uh on plant proteins and how they found a bunch of them were high in heavy metals heavy oh metal, you, yeah. mean, you mean when we were freaked out that yeah. we're gonna have to cancel we're on the phone right away cancel our organifi contract oh, yes so <laughs> i went back and i read that i read yeah. that study more thoroughly it was 75 percent. it was 75 percent of the protein powders that they Crazy. tested and they tested major brands that's the majority well didn't i and i i don't want to i don't want to say brands names that i'm not sure yeah, but i could have sworn there, people. there was some of the big big name mm -hmm. yeah i don't want to give the names out um but yes you're right they were there were the big names that you find at whole foods yes. or other stores yes mm -hmm. some of the most popular ones that people refer to and some of them were high in like in heavy metals uh like uh, like uh, lead so lead is one wow. that you don't want any in your so do you know book. do you know the those massive ones like that did they do a recall or what I mean what happens in a situation I like don't that? I have no idea that's that's a that's a great question um, now what Organifi did is they actually put out an article uh, on their tested on their products and how they test it so they actually tested them and put it out to the public and uh, Organifi's plant protein is lower than Prop 65's uh, even minimum requirements which is even way lower than what the federal requirements were so. They were super clean, but the, trip off this: the organic plant proteins measured the highest in the uh, Why? heavy metals. Why? I think it. Well, they say it has to do with the the soil that the plants pick up the heavy metals from the soil. I think it has to mm. do with the organic pesticides that they use. Because mm. remember, just because a, a plant is uh, or a food is organic doesn't mean it's not sprayed with something. It just means it's not sprayed with a synthetic pesticide. And I believe the organic, some of the organic pesticides. 
um, can cause uh, high amounts of uh, you know heavy metals. Well, whatever. that makes sense, especially if they're like drowning the plants in that, right? Yeah. So, yeah. but oh, there's some. There they are. Vega me, uh, measured high. You Garden guys have of, seen Vega. Garden of Life too. Oh, yeah. Quest, Garden of Life's a huge one. Nature's Best. They all measured uh, very high. So yeah, Vega Pure Protein. Nature's no, no, no. Best. Those are the ones that measured uh, better. Oh, better. The ones at the bottom. The ones at the top measured terrible. So oh, okay. Vega, uh, Quest, Nature's Best, Garden of Life, all measured high in heavy metals, according to this. And what was the name of the company that did this this testing, Doug? Consumer Reports is involved. I'm not sure who tested it, though. Clean Label Project. Oh, yeah. It was a Clean Label Project. That's right. Mm. But Organifi uh, very well. They did very, very well. So that's the thing about, and it's funny, here you are buying a plant, an organic plant protein, because you want to be healthy. Right. And you're, without knowing it, you're consuming... <clears throat> Heavy metals, which take a long time or never come out of the body and can cause problems like, you know, neurological uh, issues like anxiety, you know, uh, feeling anxious or inflamed. Yeah. Kind of crazy. No, it's yeah, really crazy. Cr crazy shit. Hey, speaking of crazy stuff, uh, on Justin, your story the other day, I saw you had a group of kids chasing your fucking dog. What the hell are you doing? Dude, this probably is the most brilliant idea I've ever come up with. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> this, I, is, this is your past weekend when you had the kids by yourself, right? Yeah, I had the kids by myself. I was at practice. I took my my oldest to, to, to practice. And um, we had, we've had we been having issues with, with tackling and grabbing the flag. And so... Um, I was just like, man, okay, I'm going to set up all these drills. I had like three or four different drills that we were running, and one of them was bull in the ring. I don't know if you guys – like, so in football, uh, bull in the ring is, is totally different with pads on. You're tackling. You're kind of like calling a guy out, and yeah. then you're running, and you guys like hit really hard. Uh, so this was more like in a box, and then I would have everybody run through, and then whoever got the most flags from like the entire team kind of running through was like the bull in the ring. And so uh, I decided, I was like, well, I have to like run my dog because like he's going crazy in the car, like kind of watching us all do this stuff. And I'm like, all of a sudden it just popped my head. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tie some flags to my dog and then like throw a ball. Cause he, when I throw the ball for him, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to let you get it. So he runs away from you. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to throw the ball. <laughs> he's great. running away. He's got like flags tied to him. The entire team is running after him and he's like dodging and avoiding him. And it was the, the most funny, the most hilarious thing I've ever seen. All these kids diving and like catching air and like they oh. couldn't get them. It was like, it reminded me of Rocky like chasing the chickens. Yes, I was just going to say that. <laughs> Dude, I was like, oh, Sal would appreciate this right now. I was just like, oh, I was working like a charm. I too. saw the clip. It was hilarious, man. Yeah. He, the dog is so elusive, man. Yeah. You would think that many kids would be able to surround him and get him, get him down, but no. So he was having fun too. He was having fun. It, everybody like they wanted it to become like a regular thing and now he's like like sort of like the team mascot i brought with it i brought him to the game actually too and like um it was just kind of it was funny because they they actually played like really well too and tackled so i was like oh i think this worked man yeah. you know I, that, that 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 scene from rocky i think it was rocky 2 when he had to chase the chicken mm -hmm. that was an actual old school boxing training drill. Oh, I believe it. They actually would do that. They'd yeah. have a chicken and then you have to catch it. It would make you fast, apparently. Yeah, sometimes the most simple things that are like effective. Oh, Imagine know. trying to catch a chicken. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a reaction. It's a reaction time. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. what they do with tennis balls today, right? You ever seen them do that with like goalies and stuff like that where they, they'll, they'll throw it against the wall and the goalie has his back against the wall so he can't see when the ball's coming he just sees when it hits the mm. wall and he's got to try and grab yeah, it and yeah, catch yeah, it yeah, yeah. right so it's to train that reaction time yeah because so. there's no real technique it's like just grab the flag you yeah, know like yeah. I, I, I was like trying to break it down in my head because there's a lot more techniques with tackling that i could go over but you know it was just like okay how do we get better at this no it's hand-eye coordination yeah that's a beautiful idea it yeah. was it was a beautiful idea that's, that's hilarious good. now did you guys play a game did you guys have another game we did sunday and? yeah we, we destroyed oh, oh really oh, yeah we're on fire right now like it was funny because all even the parents were like wow everybody's really coming into their own like the timing's better like all the different uh plays were just working and so yeah it was exciting man because this is the first time me and my friend ever coached uh flag football and are you all these other it? coaches are like you know like grandfathered in like they've been there forever and and uh so it was great man we were just you, you're enjoying it now yeah it's fun this oh, is what yeah. you've done two games now three three games three so, so one, two and one yeah two and one 
We oh, lost nice. our first game. Yeah. Now, but, now is there like a championship if you guys? Yeah, there'll winning? be a playoff and championship and all that. So yeah, I think we got a good shot. Dude, man. we should show up if it makes it to the championship. Oh, yeah, some no. Gatorade on. Yeah, it. that's the only way I'm coming though. If you oh, guys, all right. Yeah. yeah. If you guys suck, I'm not coming. But if you guys no, actually, get, if you guys, if you get good, bro, and you guys actually are gonna win, we have to go. We'll bring we'll, a Gatorade we'll, thing. Well, our scheme is <laughs> awesome right now. Yeah, they just gotta execute, and we're good. That's yeah. awesome. Good yeah. for you, man. Yeah, it's fun. All right, our first question is from Phoebe's Crake. So many women are saying they are quad dominant. Is this a real thing, or are these women just wanting to improve their glutes? No, it's it's real. Yeah, both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think both people, it is real, and people do want to improve their glutes. But it's not, the way people explain it is they'll say things like, my glutes are turned off, yeah. my glutes aren't firing. Or I like mean, it's a condition or something. They're firing. It's not, they're, they're not completely okay. disconnected. Um, you, you wouldn't be able to do some of these movements if they were totally turned off. But if you think of, a movement, and you think of all the joints involved and muscles involved, there's what's called a pattern. So uh, when I'm doing a squat, for example, there's a there's a pattern at which the muscles will fire, and there's an intensity at which each muscle will fire to accomplish the movement. So if I'm going down into a squat, my ankles are bending, my knees are bending, and my hips are bending, and there's muscles that support in, in, you know all of those joints, and they all have to turn on, and there's certain frequencies of intensity that they're going to turn on. And you can have a different pattern than someone else. Now, some of that has to do with your your just your anatomy. You know, if you have longer legs or shorter legs, or if you're more stiff in the ankles, you're going to have different recruitment patterns than someone else. But you can also change your recruitment patterns through training. Now, why would you want to do that? Why would I want to change my recruitment pattern? Um, well, one reason is to make the movement more efficient, make it so that it's less painful or the risk of injury is much lower. The other reason to change the recruitment pattern, and this is what bodybuilders are really good at, is to focus on target muscles that I'm trying to develop. So I'm going to throw up some, I'm going to throw out some just random percentages. So these are all arbitrary numbers. Okay. But let's say that when you do a squat, uh, you know, 60% of the load is carried by the glutes. Another, you know, 20% is carried by the quads and then another 20% is carried by the hamstrings. And let's say you want to work your quads more. You can change the focus of the exercise and your technique so that the quads go from 20 to 35%, let's say, which would take away from the other muscles. Maybe less goes from the glutes or less goes from the hamstrings. So this can definitely, um, this is something you can definitely work on. And if you're quad, quote unquote, quad dominant, it just means that you're, when you're doing lots of squats, your quads are doing a lot of work, and you mm-hmm. want other muscles to do. This more isn't work. this isn't only a thing. This is a very common thing, mm-hmm. and part of why this is a very common thing is that most all of us have some sort of an anterior pelvic tilt or an excessive one. Now, what is that? Like, so, you gotta explain that, right? Right. So that's where, and and I think this is actually exaggerated uh, even more so with with women because it's encouraged to kind of stick the butt out Mm -hmm. and it's that look. So it's when you, you, yeah, high heels will do it. Instagram. Yeah. Post. Right. Yeah. High heels do this also. And when it, what it does is it takes that pelvis and it, and it rotates out like this. So the, the butts, you know, the low back is arched and the butt is sticking up and it looks like in pictures and in your pants, it looks like you have a more bubbly butt. So I feel like it's encouraged and it's actually a really, it's really poor posture. And then you take that same that you say you have that same person that has that low curvature, that that excessive curvature in their low back, and that tilt, and then you go get them to squat. Well, what ends up happening is when you're tilted like that, your weight is over the top of you, and you become very hip flexor or quad dominant because the weight. And then when you go squat down, you're so used to being quad dominant, meaning you're when you're walking and you're moving, when the glutes are also a a major contributor to our gait. You've actually now, like using your arbitrary number, Sal, even when we walk, we walk around, we sit up and we get up and down, our glutes should be a, a, a prime mover when we do these behaviors. Problem is we have so many people that have this tilt in their pelvis that they're actually starting to take over a lot of those basic movements with their quads. So then when they go into exercise and do a squat, a deadlift, a lunge, the quads take over because they're just you've you've it's solidified. The priority. Yeah, you yeah. you've solidified that as a more dominant muscle to help movements like that. And so yeah, it's really common yeah. when you get somebody who wants to develop the glutes more that they struggle with that because it's hard now when you go into a squat it's you've already trained the quads to help and take over that movement 
and you're expecting because everybody tells you that squatting is for your butt or deadlifting is for your butt, it t- you 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 hear that, but then you go do an exercise and you feel more or most or all, almost all of it in your quads, and it's because all your behaviors throughout the day have already trained it that way. Yeah. Now I want to I want to go a little deeper. What you know, Adam said um, you're reinforcing a movement pattern or strengthening a movement pattern. It becomes your your default. Well, think of it this way, right? Let's say. Let's say you walk around in high heels all the time. You're always walking around in high heels. 90% of the time, if you're walking, it's in heels. Eventually, you're going to get really, really good at walking in heels. In fact, you'll get so good at walking in heels that you'll be better at walking in heels than you will be walking with flat feet. And that's and, and the way your body gets better at it is by changing its muscle recruitment patterns and positioning so that you get really good at what you practice a lot of. Well, if you practice a lot of things that activate the quads a lot and the glutes are not so active, when you go work out and exercise, that's what's going to fire more, most. Of you. And this is not a bad thing, by the way. This is a this is a an adaptation process that's beneficial. Uh, think of it this way: if you tore a muscle in your leg, your brain would quickly figure out how you could walk without using that muscle or minimally use that muscle. That's why we limp or hobble. When we have an injury, it's natural. Our body naturally switches to another movement pattern so that we can continue moving. So your body just learns this way. Now, if you're in the gym and you're trying to sculpt and shape your body in a way that you believe is more aesthetic, so you're not necessarily caring about how many more squats you can do or how many more, how much more weight you can lift, which, you know, uh, side note, if you get your body to move well, and muscles fire in the most optimal ways, you'll lift the most weight also. But forget that for a second. If you don't really care so much about how much weight I lift or whatever, I mean, it's important, but really what's important to you is shaping and sculpting my body in, in the most aesthetic way possible, then you're going to want to figure out how to turn these, you know, quote unquote, turn these muscles on when you're doing these exercises. Now, one way to do it is to change your form. That's an easy way to do it. Um, Quad dominant squats, you tend to see uh, a lot more what's called knee flexion. So the knee bends more than the hips tend to bend. But really, rather than just looking at the form, because what I like to do is I like to tell people, like, just have good form with your squat. Make sure this squat form is good. Now what I want you to do is learn how to feel it Hmm. in the muscles you're trying to activate. And this is what bodybuilders are really good at. Well, it's they- also hard to get, you know, proper depth too. Like a lot of times I've noticed that it, it because then it goes down the kinetic chain and it's going to affect, you know, your other joints can affect your knees, going to affect your ankles. And now all of a sudden, you know, that has to compensate, uh, you know, in order to, you know, get requires to get down to that kind of depth. So this is where those, those shoes. Now we have, uh, you know, uh, like platform shoes and squat shoes and things like that to try and help aid to kind of, uh, you know, get, give you that sort of support around your ankle that you're not creating yourself. No, that's, this is an excellent point, Justin, because <clears throat> the, the more you shorten up your range of motion on a squat, the more that exercise becomes even more quad dominant than it becomes glute. It's in the deepest position of that squat when the glute is having to really get you out of the hole. So if you're somebody that struggles with even breaking 90 degrees and you also are already quad dominant because you have this anterior pelvic tilt, yeah. boy, it's a, it's a losing battle. Now, this is where uh, priming becomes extremely valuable. Now, priming, uh, for people who aren't familiar, priming is a term that's used to describe effective warm-ups where you're doing exercises to, to quote-unquote, turn muscles on and to encourage better movement patterns before you get into these exercises. So let's say you're going to do squats. You want to feel it in your glutes. Then you do glute priming movements. You could feel the glutes firing with, let's say, uh, a, a bridge a floor or a hip thrust, right? Uh, or a donkey, you know, kick back with the leg or, or abduction. That's where you... You bring your legs apart where you, you can put like tubes around your knees and, and do like tube walking where you're feeling the glutes fire. Then you go do the squats and now you can fire the glutes better. Now there's controversy around priming because one camp says priming doesn't turn on the, the, the muscles more than any others. Okay, uh, maybe not, maybe there's not like a physiological thing that's happening that's turning muscles on from priming, but I, I will tell you what is happening. For the client or for yourself, a psychological connection. You, you feel it, hundred yeah. percent. And, and and try to separate that from the physiological. You can't. And it's, that would be to me. That's a stupid argument. It's so dumb. And you've probably never trained very many people because it's the same. It's like saying that 
Remember when you used to take somebody in a seated row and you're telling them to retract their shoulders yeah. and squeeze, yeah. and then you take your finger, point right in there, you, and you touch stick the back, it, yes, yeah. touch in the back, and you say, "Pinch my finger." It's and, that neuromuscular and, connection, it's that activation, right. you feel it. It's a real thing. Instantly, they can retract and squeeze that muscle better. That's right. So whether whether there's something physiologically happening inside of their body that you're turning on more, I think that, that that's this is another example when I get really annoyed by people that. Uh, the, the the science community that likes to shit on like you know oh it's bro information like no it's not bro information that's really good information well it's for, helpful information right because most yeah. people are completely lost there a lot of people struggle with squatting and feeling it all in their quads and never feeling it in their mm -hmm. glutes and a, a real good simple fix for a lot of people not everybody but a lot of people is to just help them feel what the what that what their glutes should feel like in a movement a floor bridge this is also why i think that you know Brett Contreras's whole uh you know glute uh, glute domination has just like exploded because showing people how to hip thrust is one of the easiest ways for you to feel your butt right and so it's and, and you can load it big time and so it's taken over the squat for a lot of people because it's easier. It's mm -hmm. easier to connect to your glutes because gravity is directly opposing the glutes in a hip thrust. Yeah. And so therefore people feel it and you can actually load it pretty heavy like you could a squat. So it just is fucking exploding. It doesn't necessarily mean it's better than a squat for glute it's development. It's easier to connect to the it's glutes. It's easier to connect to. Yeah. Which, that's why it's having so much success. Yeah. Now yeah. if you're if this is you, if you're listening and you're and it can be any muscle, right? You could be someone who when you're doing rows, you don't feel it in your back as much as you do in your arms, or you're doing a bench press and you don't feel it in your chest as much, um, or, or squats, you don't feel it in your glute as much. Uh, one thing that you, you want to do is try priming. So try doing an isolation movement for that muscle, that target muscle, before you do the, the big compound movement. Remember, an isolation movement uses one joint. Compound movements use more than one joint. So isolation movement for... Glutes would be like a, a hip thrust or – and that might not even be isolation, but it's closer to isolation, but like a like a donkey kickback or like I said, tube walking. But I'm experiencing this myself. I'm trying to really get my chest to really respond. And for a long time, I got decent at bench pressing and incline pressing, but I got really good at them. I got really strong at them, but I know I was using a lot of shoulders and triceps. Now I've backed way off on the weight, and I'm connecting to the chest, and I'm, I'm talking – I'm using – I'm using half the amount of weight that I normally would use, but I'm feeling it more. So you may have to do this. You may have to go, you may have to learn how to prime and then back way off on the weight because what ends up happening is when you're trying to go as hard and heavy as possible, yeah, default. your old recruitment pattern that you're good at. Yeah, the is brain doesn't kick know in. the brain doesn't know any better. The brain goes, get this fucking weight up. That's it's right. The easiest way possible. And the easiest way possible are the the patterns and the the strongest patterns you've already created. Right. It's That's gonna right. it's gonna always default. So you absolutely have to lighten up in order to retrain those 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 better uh, behaviors and better patterns in order to get it connected. Next question is from Ander Beth. You mentioned how carbs aren't essential, but where do you find they're especially helpful? Okay, so performance. What they're what they're referring mm -hmm. to is that uh, how carbohydrates are not an essential macronutrient. Now remember, macronutrients are proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Macro means large, so we have micronutrients too, like vitamins and minerals and other types of things. But the macronutrients are those three big ones, and all food mm. contains one of those or two or, or all of those things, proteins, fats, and carbs. Proteins and fats, you have to eat them. Yeah. There are fatty acids <laughs> or you die. that your body cannot produce on its own. Um, and if you don't eat these fatty acids, eventually your body will break down and you'll become ill or die. Same thing with protein. There are amino acids that are considered essential. Um, that you Remember, proteins are made up of amino acids. If you don't eat these amino acids, you will also get sick um, and maybe even eventually die. Carbohydrates, not essential. That means that you could go the rest of your life without eating a single carbohydrate and whatever glucose requirements your body may have, your body can produce those from proteins um, and or it uses ketones from fats. So you don't need to eat carbs. That being said, are carbs helpful? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's pretty conclusive. Studies show that when it comes to performance, especially explosive type performance, yeah. Eating carbohydrates is a good thing. If your carbs are low or no carbs, 
uh, you're going to reduce your athletic performance. It's just readily accessible. Like you, you feel the difference of uh, energy, like on command uh, w- with carbs. Like if I know that I have you know a certain amount of carbs, I, I know that I'll be able to burn and and and, and, and you know have that accessible energy like on command right then. It's yeah. also it's much easier to bulk or build with carbohydrates than without. I mean that's uh, there, yes, there's. Ex- uh, People or uh, you know examples of people that have done the ketogenic diet and have still built muscle doesn't mean you can't. But you know, try doing try building muscle on the ketogenic diet and then try incorporating carbs and tell me which one is significantly easier to do. Way easier. Yeah, way which- easier. You're stronger. Um, obviously, you get better pumps in the gym. Mm. Um, it's easier to eat more food. I, I find uh, carbohydrates can be more appetite stimulating at times. Oh, way, yeah. way, way more appetite yeah. stimulating. Yeah. I mean, you have a you have a bowl of oatmeal in the morning. I guarantee, in two hours later, you're you're starving. You know, have yourself a you know MCT and butter coffee, yeah. or eat a bowl go, of bacon. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And watch how you're good. You are. It satiates you for the, until two, three o'clock That's in right. the afternoon. Yeah. So. If you eat, if you eat all three macronutrients, your body t- produces and uses the energy from carbohydrates first. It's the fastest, easiest source of energy for your body. Now, why is it not essential? Probably because humans evolved during periods of time where there were no carbohydrates available. Um, carbohydrates in nature largely come from, uh, or all pretty much all come from plants, plant sources. Well, we've had a few ice ages on earth and there were, I'm sure there were periods of time when humans are walking around and before they learned how to plant, uh, you know, plants and, and had grow crops, you're walking around, there's no plants. Yeah. I'm not getting any carbohydrates. And so our You're bodies eating mammoths. Yeah, and so our bodies evolved to to cr- create its own energy off of fats and proteins which we could almost always find because we were hunters, we're apex hunters. Um that that doesn't make it ideal. Um I want I want to I want right. to communicate that cuz I think a lot of people think oh they're not essential therefore it's ideal to not eat carbohydrates. No, they're look the studies done on the healthiest populations on earth shows that um, some of the healthiest populations on earth, earth eat a higher carbohydrate diet as well. Now there's some that eat very low carbohydrates. Um, it's not one of those things that's like, it's not good or bad, but I will say this for performance. It's a good thing. This is yeah. conclusive by the way. There's no debate. Uh, this is hundred percent conclusive. Now there are some athletic endeavors that low carbohydrates or no carbohydrates may be perfectly fine. You're, we were talking about the low intensity, long duration, steady state, type, uh, you know, endurance type activities. Like if you're going to do a slow jog or walk for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles, uh, or swim at a slow pace for miles and miles and miles, you could do fine on, on really, really low or no carbohydrates. Um, and fat adapted. Yeah. Your body's burning fats, but, but you want speed, power, strength. Well, that's why I see the benefit of, you know, ketones more as the mental clarity aspect of it. And I, I've definitely experienced the sharpness that that provides versus like, you know, having a lot of carbs in my system. It's, it's a different experience. That's a good point. I do notice that as well. If I go very low carb and my fats are high after that whole transition period, I do get the same, that sharpness. Now I do want to say this, if you're following a diet that makes you you, you as an individual, you're healthiest, that's the best diet for you. Right. right. Yeah. So like if you're, I know a few people who eat a very extreme no carbohydrate diet known well, we as talk carnivore. About, we talk about Michaela Peterson. She's yeah. a good example of this, of somebody who, you know, all, on no carbohydrates. All she eats is meat. Right. That's all she eats. Now she's got autoimmune issues that pop up whenever she eats anything that's not meat. Mm-hmm. So for her, her best performance is going to be no carbohydrates. Uh, but if you're otherwise healthy, yeah, I, I wouldn't. Uh, they're 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 best for performance, for speed, for muscle building, and dare I say, in some cases, even for uh, fat loss. Uh, if your carbs are too low and it's starting to affect your hormones negatively, or it's affecting your workouts negatively, and you're not able to build muscle, you know what happens when you're on a low calorie diet? You your body sometimes wants to lose muscle, mm-hmm. and cutting carbs completely out may encourage that process of losing muscle, which then down the line may lead to a slower metabolism. If we've talked about that at nauseum, that then can cause problems for you long term in terms of fat loss. So, um, besides the individual variants, carbs are are great for most things. Next question is from Christian: Is caffeinated? What has been each of your favorite live event so far? Are there more in the future, and where do you see them going? 
Manhattan for sure. Manhattan was your favorite. Hands, uh, hands down. Yeah. Hands yeah. down, I think Manhattan still... Um, I think we hit our our uh, our stride as far as like... or I think we started to put together the formula in Manhattan of uh, hanging out with the 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 crowd or the people first so we had at that at that event we had viore and then we had the where the the actual q a was was right next door so we had the mm-hmm. ability to uh, kind of hang out and meet and greet and you know have a couple beers and stuff with all the people that would be watching the live event and then we all walked next door so that was the first time i think we had done that we realized how much that kind of you know, it was funny. We talked about all about our uh, the, when we first started doing these about our own personal nerves or what that would be like, and we all felt pretty fine. But we noticed the audience had kind of nerves and were uh, weren't opening up and relaxing and asking whatever they wanted to ask. And we found that when we started to hang out with all of them first, and and I, and I probably let everybody feel that we're fucking just like we are on the podcast in real life and we're normal ass fucking people and we all hang out and, and bullshit. And then we go into the Q and a, it was just really loose. Mm-hmm. It was loose and fun. And you know, we were, we were talking a lot of shit in the beginning too. Which we were it fun. It did. Yeah. yeah. We were throwing <laughs> zingers at each other and it was uh, very, very much. So I think uh, comfortable and natural for us. Um, we've had a few since then. I think are, they're all been great and they're all special and unique in their own way. I also think too that for whatever reason, that crowd, the questions they brought were were really good. Mm-hmm. So it's it's funny. Every time we do these, we get different questions and it really sets the tone for what yes. the event's like. like it, you, it, I've noticed that too. It's the audience that really determines where we go. Yeah. I mean, it, that's the format is like when you, when you open it up for just any question, you know, like it, it is kind of like, it's it's interesting to think about because most shows or most live things is pretty planned out. Like everything has its its format, mm-hmm. and like a, like we're just like okay, bring it. And and sometimes it takes you in like a serious place. Sometimes it takes you in an emotional place. Yeah. Sometimes it's like really funny and lighthearted. And uh, so yeah, I again I think that's what it is. It's just like they're all different and they've been. Uh, cool for different aspects of it, but I I would probably agree with you on the Manhattan one. Yeah, for sure. I think so. You guys like Manhattan because of our performance. You say that was. Uh, I think the overall oh. energy of it for me was yeah. just kind of because more I of- I even think the questions to your point, Justin. I thought the Manhattan one when I if I recall did a really good job of personal, a little business, a little fitness, uh, a little like even. Uh, very serious and emotional. Like kind of, I felt like we kind of hit everything. Mm-hmm. Where some of them have felt like we just did one with Mike, right? And it was uh, um, very business heavy, mm-hmm. right? Very, very, very business heavy. That was kind of all that we went to. No emotion whatsoever. Then we had the one in San Francisco that was like super heavy. I cried. Oh, that's it. right. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Or then we've had ones where people were asking like very technical, yeah. but personal trainer questions, you know? Like, yeah. so it's it's yeah. different every time. I, I would say, I would agree in terms of our performance. I would say our, our, our we were our best at that event. Um, my favorites, though, I have some just some selfish ones, uh, reasons why I have a, a different ones that are my favorites. Because you look the most handsome. Yeah. It was one I was just, I was, I was, I was beaming. <laughs> I looked at the pictures and I was like, wow. It's like a Hollywood person. Yeah, this yeah. is great. No, that's not what it was. <laughs> yeah. um, w- the, the San Francisco event uh, was special to me because uh, my family was there. Um, oh, yeah. It was the first I had, uh, gosh, I had, I think I had eight, eight or nine family members that visited uh, on that one. So these were my cousins. My brother was there. My, you know, my ex brother-in-law was there and they got to see for the first time, uh, me and my element. They did, they listened to the podcast and, you know, they'd heard me talk about what we do, but they'd never been in seeing me in my element and seeing all of us in our element. And it was Mm -hmm. really special because I, I, I would look to the back of the room and I could see my family there. And it just felt really good. Like, oh, here they get to see what we've been doing for the last few years. And they get to see the impact, the positive impact that we're having on people. So it was very, just personally, it was a, it was a very uh, special one. And then there was, this is, and you guys, I don't know if you guys saw this. I don't think you guys saw this in Denver. This was, um, this one really impacted me uh, Denver was tremendously. Fun. Yeah, I like Denver. Denver was fun. The people were great there. Great town, by the way. One of the best cities I've ever been to. Yeah. Short period of time I was there. I loved it. Um, but at the end, what we do at these live events is at the end, everybody, they'll try and take pictures. And at the end, we'll talk to people and hang out with them. And this guy comes up to me and he's this tall dude, muscular dude. And he's a, he's a trainer. And he goes, hey, do you mind if I ask you 
a personal question. So I'm like, sure, I don't mind. A lot of people ask me personal questions. And he goes, where are you on your spiritual and religious journey? So I'm like, oh, shit. Okay. So I'm very honest. And we have this wonderful, this big conversation. I have no idea who this guy is or what he does. And he goes, he goes, well, that's wonderful. And he goes, uh, well, I'm a pastor. He goes, would you mind if I prayed? Uh, would you mind if I prayed for you? So I'm like, sure, you can, you can pray for me. And I thought, you know, he's going to go home and pray for me. No, nah, man, right then and there. <laughs> he put his hand around my shoulder. Tied you down. Now, I'm, again, I, I, I wouldn't consider myself uh, religious. Um, I, I like to explore these things. I'm very open-minded. Um, I, I, would, I don't belong to any uh, religious doctrine. But I do find, I don't care what religion, he, he, he happened to be a Christian. I don't care what religion you are. If that's your belief and you feel uh, compelled to open that up to me, who's someone who's openly said they're not, I'm not necessarily religious. That is a huge, I, I, I respect and value that. I don't care if he was Buddhist, he could have been Hindu, Muslim, doesn't matter. But he was Christian. And he says, would you mind if I prayed for you? I didn't expect him to do it right there. He puts his arm around <laughs> yeah. me and does this like long prayer for me. And I was like, wow, man, I, I, this guy, he, you know, he felt we've impacted him so much that he felt like he could give back to me in his way, which was that, and so it just made me feel really good. And that kind of highlights. Uh, we just got to baptize, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was baptized as a baby, <laughs> dude. Nice. Catholic, remember? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's oh, cute. you were? Yeah, oh, he's, oh, yeah. he's safe. Hey, he's safe. All right. You're, <laughs> you're fireproof then. <laughs> yeah, right. We're good. We're good. Right. No, I, uh, you know, I also, I really liked this and I was nervous about this. Um, I was really nervous about the private dinner that we decided to do. And what I was nervous about was. You know, it was it was $600 a ticket to sit and have dinner with us. Now, what came with that was, you know, they had- the, Adam gives you a back rub. <laughs> yes. <We> all, <laughs> I was afraid we, I was going to have to do that. It. You know what yeah, I'm saying, right? Exactly. Yeah. Depending on how it went. No, you had the you had the really nice dinner that we that we took care of for the people that were there. We then had the the private- uh, um, Podcast. Podcast right? episode with Mike Matthews. So they got to sit in on that and actually ask questions for us and Mike. Um, and then, of course, they got like a swag bag, a free program, a bunch of other things. But I was, I was, what I did not want to do was I did not, I wanted people, if they came to that, they spent that kind of money. I wanted them to leave and feel like, holy shit, I would have paid double for that. And I was nervous of that. I didn't know, I had no idea yeah, so was I. How, how that was going to play out. And that was really, uh, really important to me that we over delivered on that. And um, it felt great because I we I got great uh, messages from the, the the people that actually went uh, and said, oh my God, I, I hope you do this again. I would definitely come again if we can do this again. So that that made me feel good, and that was really cool. Yeah, the the the, the awkward part for me during the dinner because I had a great we all had a great time. They were great people, mm -hmm. uh, great stories, all very different. The awkward part for me is I, I felt so much gratitude to these people, you know, because it's weird to me. Like you're gonna. Mm -hmm. You're gonna pay that much money to come hang out with us and ask me questions. Like I, I want to, I'm so I have, I'm so gracious that you're supporting us um, in the way that you are. And I, when I feel a lot of gratitude towards people, I want to like hug you. I want to <laughs> kiss you. I want to tell you how much I love you. So I'm like, how do I behave? And they're like, dude, hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, how do I act? So you guys saw me. I was walking yeah. around, put my hand on people's shoulders, talking. Right. But I want to let them know, like, man, we really appreciate you guys doing this. And I think at the end of the day, that's what the live events uh, really bring us is, is that after we're done with that, I'm, I feel like this renewed yeah, sense it's of a physical connection. Yeah, I mean, this, you're just you're seeing. Purpose, so. yeah, and as far as live. where as far as where we see them going in the future, I, I you know I'm not sure. We uh, actually it's ironic that this question was picked because we. We were having this discussion just a little while ago of, you know, how often, you know, what's what's the right amount of these that we do, and you know, last year I think we did seven of them. Um, I don't know if we'll do seven this year hmm. uh, or not. I, I definitely know we'll do at least one a quarter. Um, yeah, three or four probably for a year is probably right. And, and because I think that we we do feel uh, the value of them. I think we we enjoy them selfishly. I think the the people that show up and go to them, I think they enjoy them. Um, it's just not, uh, it's it, as far as our time and the mm -hmm. amount of time it takes to kind of plan them, to organize them, what we're doing all that day is centered around that, mm -hmm. uh, the staffing that it takes to, to do all that. We do, in fa all yeah. fairness, we need to make a trip out to the East Coast. It's yeah. Been, we've done well, an, enough of these and we haven't gone to the I think Arnold's it, it, already being planned. You guys yeah, it'll that, be right? a great excuse yeah. to, to go, uh, you, you know, different regions and different places that uh, I, I really want to take you guys to Chicago just because, like, I lived there for a long period of time and it's, 
it you know it has some relevance for me and it's like other places like we, we can make our way out like if we plan it out well to other countries even at some point like who knows but it's not yeah. it's not like a, a tour schedule of like uh you know like i'm on a band and i gotta hit all these cities up you know like i don't mm. i don't look at it like that no well we're for sure coming out this year to arnold classic we will be out there that weekend we'll be hosting it somewhere else but nearby uh for people that are already planning on going out there that's so Ohio, yeah. that's that's already in the works and then I'm with you, Justin. I think there, I think we'll do less frequency of them and more unique places that we haven't been yet so we can get yeah, to so other we parts can, of the country. Yeah, meet other people we haven't seen before. Yeah. Next question is from the Maple Leaf Man. What is the line concerning your relationships with your clients? How close do you think you can get with them before it gets crossed? Oh, this is an interesting This question. is a good question because uh, as a trainer, when you're training someone, you know, consider this. Let's say you do a good job. Let's say you're a really good trainer. I have a strong opinion. You're going to be, yeah, yeah I, I think we all do. About this, yeah. if, if you're a good trainer, you're going to be seeing a client for between one to three hours a week, every single week, undivided, one on one attention for potentially years. Mm -hmm. um, towards the end of my career, I had all my clients were with me for over five years, many of them were with me for over 10 years. I had clients that were with me for 13 years, same time, same day, mm -hmm. week in and week out. I would see these people. Now think about that. That's hours of undivided attention every week um, for years. They probably see you more uh, often and consistently than they do most of their friends and family. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just undivided. It's like, imagine meeting with a friend two hours every well, week. Well, imagine lunch. what's happened to us. Yeah. I mean, we talk about this all the time, just in the four years time that we've been together. Yeah, I feel uh, like we've been best friends forever. Yeah. You guys, I think you have surpassed my friends that I've known for 25 years as far as know, what you know about me. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. we just do it. Undivided so, attention. For and the hours. reason why that's so- I talk to my other friends like this. Yeah. <laughs> this is all new to me. They just punch each other. Yeah. Okay. Ah, new, ooh, noogies. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and so now here you are, you're a good trainer, you're doing a good job, so clients want to see you consistently, you see them for years, you're going to get close to them. There's, there's, no, there's no way around it, you're going to know about their families, you're going to know about their days, you're going to know each other's personalities, so that's going to happen no matter what, um, but I do think it's important that you always remember that you, they hired you, they're paying you to be their trainer, so there should always be a level of professionalism or that line there that you always maintain. And really it's a line of integrity. It's not because mm -hmm. now, sure, this goes without saying it's smart. You don't want to go too far with a client because weird stuff could happen. It could feel awkward, whatever. No, this is about integrity. They are hiring you. And because this is what I've seen happen. I've seen clients with trainers, trainers train them for years and the quality of the training just declines over the years mm -hmm. because the trainer starts looking at them like it's my buddy. Oh, it's my buddy coming in and the training quality goes down. Then the client feels weird Telling their, their buddy, hey, I think the way you're training me isn't as good as it used to be, or hey, I don't know if I want to train with you anymore because yeah. it's, and it becomes this weird thing. Always remember they hired you, you're the professional, maintain that integrity, and then I think you're going to be okay. And this goes, of course, goes without saying, don't sleep with your clients, don't fucking, you know, yeah. don't do shit with your clients. Everybody that, can tell. Yes, everybody knows. Yeah, the body language says everything. <laughs> yes. I yeah. feel even stronger about this. Um, and I, maybe that's because most of my career I managed trainers. And so I was constantly having this conversation. And I am not a fan of you hanging out with your clients at all. Mm -hmm. at all. And you, I agree with Sal, you're going to become very close to these people because you spend hours and hours and potentially years and years with them. But it's a, a quick way to have a really hard time retaining the business when you become really close to them. Imagine your best friend who does something that a service that that you want, like, and then him charging you all the time. At one point, you finally look at him like, "Hey, we're friends. You do this, yeah. I do that. Yeah. How about I help you out? You help me out, and we just we're friends." It turns that happens into, more often than that. Almost always happens. Yeah. It's it's almost inevitable. So I do do not like hanging out with clients outside of of the gym and or us meeting for professionally now. Uh, I've maintained relationship, many relationships beyond contracts. Like, 
you know, you were a client of mine for two years. You've got all the results. You, you're you on with your life and doing something else, or maybe you lose your job or you transfer, you move, and we still stay in contact. I've got many of those clients that I trained uh, two decades ago, mm -hmm. and we still talk to each other because I really like them as a person and we're friends now. But during the time that we were in a contract with each other and we were doing business, it was business, and I and I, and I maintain that. Aside from whatever other reasons too, because you start going out drinking with them and having Sunday fun day with them, and mm -hmm. and that absolutely can lead to issues or some really fucking pro major problems. Which I've had trainers do this, and I've seen it a million times. But even just from just purely business, it, it's really hard to ask for the resign when you've gotten on a very close friend level outside of the gym. If it's professional all the time and you're just seeing them in the gym and you're it's time to renew and contract. Plus, I also think when they when they like you that much and they love spending their time with you that much and the only time they get is the time that they're paying. Oh yeah. A lot of times it clients makes it more valuable. I had many clients that I know damn well that they could have went on on their own and continued training without oh, yeah. me. Yeah, after yeah. 5 years of consistent training, you know, do they need to train with you? Right, but they renew because yeah. they value that hour that they get with me. Absolutely. And I'm okay with yeah. that. It's you know? also it also it also can get really weird in this sense like you start to lose your effectiveness as a trainer. Okay, let me let me explain it this way. How hard is it for you to train a good friend of yours that you've known for for years or a spouse or a girlfriend or a boyfriend? Right. It's difficult because they know you on a different level. When someone hires you, you're the professional, you're the trainer. Once you guys, if you start to get super, super close, now it's like, okay, I know you as trainer, Sal, but now we're going out and hanging out. You know me as regular guy, Sal. I'm, I'm going to lose my influence over you. I'm going to lose my ability to help you as a trainer because now you're just you're just you're viewing me just as your friend which isn't necessarily a bad thing but if it is if you want to maintain your integrity as an effective trainer if you want to maintain your integrity as an effective trainer you have to always be that person you know i trained Doug for a couple years before we went into business and that's not a super long time i mean i mean under personal training standards it's a long time but i had clients who were with me for for much longer but i trained him consistently two to three days a week, week in, week out for two years before we ever went into business with each other. And he knew, and it's funny, he commented on this uh, several times, like I had no idea the other side of you. I the, view, the, vi the, vision, the version of me that he saw day in and day out was the integrity personal training style, personal trainer style. And I, he, see, he sees glimpses of the other side of me, but I always maintain that. Once we got to, and it doesn't mean that I was a, I'm a bad guy, he's just... I, I maintain that level of professionalism. I think it's it's super important if you want to be effective, um, and you want to be uh, you know if you want to be a good trainer, Don't maintain that integrity. Yeah, it's funny because I mentioned uh, like how Courtney and I met, and it's always like kind of a joke because I'm like. I always pride myself on being like super professional. If like, you cross that fucking line, you better be ready to marry her. That's it. Yeah, he <laughs> that's did. it. That's, that's what happened. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you, know, but you, you cross that line, you better be then, ready to marry her. I, I, I was like, I did not cross that line. It, it, yes, there was flirting. And yes, there was, you know, like hints of like what was to come in terms of like what my <laughs> in, intentions. But I would have loved, I wish. I could see the flirting that happened between uh, your was, I remember it. I it remember was aggressive when he, on I end. knew I knew the yeah. first session, dude. I'm yeah. like, this is his type of girl, dude. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. It was on, dude. Yeah. yeah. So I I I checked myself. Like I got <laughs> we built up to a point where it was on that level where it was okay. Like I like we're like friend too friendly and like I keep trying to like, you know, use this to to go outside of work. And I'm like, I have to get I have to cut this and and and, and pass it along to mm -hmm. another qualified trainer and uh, anyways, but that was a career decision for me. Like I could have easily have just like, you know, used uh, that time to kind of like keep yeah. spitting my game and, and, and trying to make my way into, uh, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, status at that point. I know a lot of trainers, I saw it firsthand. Like, I'm like, okay, this is, this is a problem over here and it's already developing right in front of everybody's yeah. eyes. And the, the, the problem with that is that everybody, you don't realize how many people watch and see shit. And everybody everybody does. knows, yeah. you know, and then that becomes a reputation that you carry with yeah. you trying to gain other clients. You know, now, now you're hindering your business on that level. Yeah. Totally, totally. And as a trainer, you're going to get flirted with. 
This right. just comes with the territory. You need to learn how to harness that yeah. and, and use the resign. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> yes. Thanks. Terrible I'm advice. Just, yeah. Don't <laughs> don't shit where you eat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's Terrible that's advice. Good absolutely. Yeah, I like that. And look, you can go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides. They're all absolutely free. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.